Hey guys, it's Joe Lyons here from the Automator, and uh, Isaiah is uh, with me. Hi. We uh, we're we are just wrapping up our latest course on Udemy, and it's uh it's the cutting edge technology intro <laughs> to DOS. <laughs> That's right. You know this this cutting edge technology from more than forty years in the yeah. past, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 80s, yeah. Um, it's funny, but so it, it it was really funny. We were talking about our next course. And I was um, looking on Udemy, and we only found a couple courses, and, and we weren't happy with the quality of them. They were they were pretty poor. And we started talking about how much we use DOS. So, and also, there's actually a little hook at the end of it with AutoHotKey and using um, the uh, uh, command spec and yeah. you know run wait and run um, commands. But um, what we wanted to do here was to to give you a little discussion. If you're not currently using DOS right at all. Here are some of the ways that, that we use DOS. So that's what we wanted to right, comment. Right, exactly. So, so the, the the biggest question is why why would I use DOS? Yes, you crazy now, old man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like. Yeah, that's what there was. But now the problem is that a lot of the 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 main idea is that a lot of the graphical interfaces that we have has a, a lot of limitations. Like for example, um, if you want to go ahead and um, take a look at your IP addresses, right? And some configuration about that. You can do it via the graphical user interface, but you have to click a lot to get there, right? Um, they made it in a way that for me, I, I find it, it is weird that you have to first go to the network settings, then you have to click on the network, then you have to do some other things, and then you right click on that particular device and hit properties to see the IP address. Um, or change it, you don't have a very easy way to do that. So in the end, if I need just to flush my IP address or check um, what my IP address is very quickly, I just resort to just going to the command prompt and typing IP config, and I have all the information there, and I could flush my DNS right there. Um, you know, it is a little bit kind of like easier for me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people who don't know it is there. Um, and we were actually discussing this, Joe, that uh, m many young people um, don't even think about uh, having this part of the operating system, which is the basis of Windows. It started out as a command prompt, and then they added graphical user interface to those commands. So it is kind of like, that's the basis of Windows. It has been evolving, of course, and now it's relegated to a secondary tool, but it is useful nonetheless. There are some things that we do with it. Um, well, like, for example, what, what, if, what is the first thing that you would think about when you say like DOS? What would, I, what would you use it for? Yeah, but absolutely the very thing that always comes up for me is when Windows won't boot. Right. Okay. And I'm stuck at a command. I'm looking at this black box, you know, I'm like, um, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I remember, I remember I could do a couple things here, you know, when I start slowly remembering what I had learned from forever ago, but yeah. digging around your, your, in your DOS environment, um, even just running the, the restore programs and stuff is actually like, you're still in the command prompt. Right. <laughs> and actually right now with windows 10, they changed it in a way so that if your computer is loading, if it is booting, and you reset by, for whatever reason, it jumps to safe mode automatically. So you automatically fall into the safe mode. And there is this safe mode with the command line prompt. The reason is there is because when you enter into safe mode, the command prompt is the one that is going to save you from a lot of we little weird quirks of Windows, you know? So yeah, that's one of the reasons why you should at least have it in mind, troubleshooting, network troubleshooting, um, safe mode troubleshooting. If the Windows does not start, right? There's more things that we could do. Yeah, the one that was interesting, because I'm going to let you add to it, because you were, you were the one that brought up the other stuff, but I was saying how I use it because I'll add parameters. Like if I want to launch a certain program with a couple you know, uh, parameters to it, um, yes. I, I do will do that. But you brought up the great point, which is what? Um, I'm sorry. So... Uh, we're talking about the, yeah, the command prompt. Just so you can you can do the help basically and get right, it right. Okay, so 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 basically, yeah. yeah. I, what 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 I was saying is, there's a lot of uh, programs that have a graphical user interface, and um, you might not expect that they have that you can pass command line parameters to them. 
So a very quick way for you to do that is just open a command prompt, use the executable and type help right next to it or dash help or slash help. And you might find that you can pass some interesting parameters to it and you can use it with your tools or your other programs. So even when you're doing auto hotkey scripts, you can actually open a, a, a program and pass parameters to it in a very interesting way. I, I could show you real quick if you, if, that, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, go for it. Right. So basically, um, I think a lot of people will be somewhat familiar with this. Not, and they just didn't realize, you know, in, in a lot of ways, this is what we're now. You can use DOS to help you learn some of these commands. Like, yeah. That's what so, was so one of the things is that um, they know. Most of the people know that if you right click here on a, on a shortcut. Sometimes you can pass parameters to it, like for example, to enter into safe mode and that disables all the extensions for Chrome or something like that. You have seen those online, but how the do you know? Mode, right, right. Class. Yeah, for example, the, the, the yeah. debug mode, but how do you figure out that right. you can do that, right? Most of the programs that accept parameters, you can go to the command prompt and I'm going to give the example of VS Code, which is kind of one of those that you wouldn't expect that it has Right. Command line parameters, so it right? It is a cutting edge program, right? <laughs> right. So, so let me see. If, um, yeah. So if you run code, it would just open the VS code like this. But if you run code and you pass, for example, help, I think, um, you might get this list of things that you can pass to it. And it is kind of interesting. You can actually use the slash D, uh, well, the dash D and pass it to files and That's it will awesome. compare the two files right away. So you just open code and then file one.txt and file two. Sorry, I have to put the slash D file one.txt and file two.txt. And when you open, when it opens, it opens in a diff mode, which VS Code has, has which is awesome. Yeah, now you let's can, let me follow up on that one real quickly here, though, because I love, like, you used the command prompt to discover you could do this. But right. then what I would do, like, let's say you and I are working on the same thing a lot. Well, hey, I'm going to take what you just did here, write it out, but I'm going to make a shortcut to that in Windows. So exactly. now I can just... Exactly. You know, so now you can actually yeah. grab this thing, copy it, and go to your VS Code shortcut or whatever. Right. And now that shortcut, you can actually add the parameters to it, like, this VS code here, right. you can pass slash D file one, file two. And now that shortcut, whenever you just click on it, right. it would go ahead and perform that weird command that you said. Like, look at this. You can actually set the memory to it. If I want VS code to not use more than 500 megabytes of my mm -hmm. memory, I could set it up like that. And I set up my, my shortcut to always open like that. And stuff and like that. You you can find very interesting that, stuff. In you here. had the disable extensions, which I thought was a really great one. Of um, yes, here it says like to run. You know exactly. Hey, so a, so here it tells you. Code. Yeah. Yes, you can actually um, manage uh, the extensions, and I think one of them would be run without extensions. Um, I do not. Oh, here it is. Disable I, extensions, I which run would that. run it without all the extensions open and. You could figure out if there was an issue caused by one of them, right? So like Outlook, I think has. I think there's actually a hotkey you can like hold the control while you're launching it, and we'll do that. Right. I can't remember, but there are programs who because this happens, right? And you can't get into them, and there's no way to get around it. So they have a way to get into safe mode. But here's how you can learn how to do those things. How right? to do that? So sometimes, most of the times, um, the command prompt it is overlooked, but there's a lot of interesting stuff that you can yep. do the, there. Um, now, if you go to the advanced uh, sectioning, right? So now you're troubleshooting and now things have gone totally wrong and you do not even have Windows, right? So now you're outside of a Windows environment. A lot of times you can use DOS to actually modify a file system in a disk without even being inside Windows. You can well, check your partitions, you can... Uh, you know, change the, the, the size of your partition in the fragment. Format, what I would say, you know, before you go down that route, use DOS to go copy some of those critical files that you're worried about. Copy them. That would be the first thing. That, right. So, so I, I, I lost everything. Oh, well, you don't have to. Right. Um, but I don't have a Windows machine to copy. The only thing I have is this black box. Well, 
just copy everything. You know, there's a command X copy. You can X copy everything to a safe location, another disk or whatever you have before you mess with that hard drive um, and you don't end up losing all your work. Um, so, so there's a lot of reasons why to at least learn the um, basics of DOS, even yeah. if you don't use it every day, right? Yeah, and some of the other things that we cover in this course, which honestly I knew about, but I hadn't used them. But when I was watching, you know, some of the videos that you did, um, some of the, like the piping, you know, being able to pipe in the results into your clipboard or into a text file and stuff, like we're like, wow, that, I see the power there. Or using a variable, set the variable, then reuse it later. Like that was really cool. Um, and then yes. one, you can even use the copy command, right? To merge, which I do that. Like I use oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You copy, yeah. Do you grab two files that are kind of like text files? Cool. You just copy them. And the last parameter, you just put the name of one file. Right. It's going to grab those two files and just and create stats. one of them. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. When and I had like a thousand CSV files and I needed to merge them, like it's one line of code. It takes like a second yes. and it's done. It's, it's crazy. Now, yeah. some people don't think uh, like I don't I don't have to do that, but there are some people who I know would find that very useful, but they don't know it's possible, and they would go and try to download a program that does what they want, a file merger tool. Man, you have MS DOS and it does it already right. since 1984. You know, like has been doing that since that time. Yeah, now you, you don't have, even <laughs> you have headers from everything, right? So if you have it from each file, you have to go dedupe or something to get rid of the headers. But it's still to me, I'm like, you know what? I don't care. It's so easy. It's just so much easier than writing a complex program to do this. Um, right. Um, so in, in that case, I I, I even um, think that we we didn't cover like the whole thing because there's so many things, right. but just sure. imagine. You can even schedule tasks in DOS, right. things that you know that they are going to be run at a specific time. You can just do that on the, so, so there's a program that you want to open every morning at a specific time, not when your computer starts, not at the, it's just like, I know that at 3 PM, I have to do something and I want to open that program at that. And when I finish, I simply close it and I want to forget about it, but tomorrow I want it to open again. Yeah, you can do that on, on, the, commas, uh, on the command line and it is just one line of code as well. You just type it, the task manager, sorry, the task scheduler and just create the line for it. Which, if you know how to do that, then you're set up, man. You know, another great one, which, which is covered in the course, but we didn't have it in our little notes here, we're cheat sheet, is the, uh, the task list can task kill. Right, which was right. like yeah, we did that's really we did cool. talk about them. Yeah, yeah that you can uh, you can see what's actually running and decide to kill something from there. And because sometimes within Windows, you just can't go and do exactly what you want to do, and this gives you an alternative way. So yes, so basically, I I think this, even though DOS has been relegated to a secondary tool right now, it um, save your butt. It is actually, and now. Even, you can even look at it this way. The DOS, the command prompt, is kind of like an introduction to the PowerShell. Yeah, so oh, sure. Need to yeah. See, right, yeah. So, so if you already know DOS and you know what to do with it, you will not feel totally lost in the PowerShell, right? right? You at least have a little idea of what is going on, right? And and this is where I didn't cover them in, in and I know we didn't, well, we, we didn't use the GUIs course. But the um, the intro and intermediate auto hockey course, I didn't cover really the run and run weight stuff because it was kind of different. But it still is, you know, that's what we cover here: running command spec, uh, using command spec, and, and doing it um, with auto hockey. And, and it, the thing is, this is where it does tie in with auto hockey really well in the sense mm -hmm. of understanding. There's a lot of stuff that we do which is probably a lot of these people watching this are familiar with doing the run or run weight, you know, or, or, or comm spec. Um, but you didn't quite realize you're actually doing DOS, you know, you're running the stuff at the command it's prompt. True. And but actually, from, I, I, I would actually point out, you have been using this little tool that uses the FFmpeg uh, library. Spot right? on, great point. Right, and, 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 and probably until we talked about DOS, maybe you didn't realize that every time you did this run FFmpeg, 
Oh no, I yeah. You, you, yeah. They would be I, like, I do it from the command prompt. Oh, um, right. So you yeah. knew already. Okay, but yeah. there's some people that they do it Absolutely. like they do it in right. out of hotkey, right. but they don't yeah. know that they're actually right. passing a command to the command right. line, right? Well, so, first off, it's a com spec, and you're like, what? What in the world? Com? No one tells you what it is. Um, you know, like if you right. actually Google it, there is no no one actually defined it. I I tried researching it and someone just said my best guess was it's the command specifications <laughs> like it's not actually like some it's not like it's, they don't think it is the command prompt itself but that is right. actually yeah. you're right. referring to the location of the command prompt so again it, it makes sense to at least know the basics and you don't have to be a master yeah. at it oh, but a yeah, little bit was, of things right yeah my point is i've been using it i don't know for 30 years and when I went through this course, I actually learned a lot of like, oh, that's really cool. I didn't know you could do that, right? There were lots of little ahas. And we didn't even put the real advanced stuff in, right? We no, talked about it, it, but we're like, yeah, let's maybe we'll do another one. But um, there was still really cool stuff that I learned in this. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the course. It's, it's pretty, pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, it is very good. So in any cool. case, um, we do suggest you guys to take a look at it if you're interested in learning at least. Yeah, remember, basics. we'll have a coupon code on the automator. Um, that'll be the right. best discount. The first... One out of the, right away, we'll have one for five days. Um, I don't know if, when you watch this video, so that one may not be um, still valid, but we'll always have one on the automator. Okay, excellent. So we're going to be touching on the next one, right? Yeah, cheers. Bye.